Uh, this is a tour of my Toyota Land Cruiser 100 series what I call a micro camper basically it's a no build conversion to a camper when I go car camping or backpacking I leave the car at the camp at the trailhead I'm gonna show you what I've done here so let's get started right, let's walk behind the car start from the back Got, I've got my bike rack, then I call this the kitchen area. That's my electric fridge. It's hooked up to a second battery in the engine compartment and a solar panel on top of the roof. I'll show it later. A couple of boxes for my breakfast and and my main cooking stuff. And, and then the, a two burner stove. In this breakfast thing, I have like a pocket stove and coffee and tea and a kettle and then if I'm doing big cooking I'll pull the big guns the two burner propane tank propane stove this fridge actually it barely fits here but in order to open the, the lid I have to pull it out a little that's okay though so I can close it like this I have this reflective to cover the window Now if we go to the back, that's how I enter the car from the passenger, rear passenger door. These Toyota Land Cruisers have these jump seats, the third row seats, that usually, in order to store them, you, you fold it flat and then they pivot towards the window and stay up there. So what I've done is I've made it a split. This side is for, you know, you know when I'm at night resting, I can sit there, watch, you know, YouTube stuff on my computer or read. Then for sleeping, I have the other third row seat flat, you know, fold it down. So it creates a flat surface. That's the second row seat. And then the gap between, I just put the plywood over. So there's a gap here that I cover with the plywood so I can actually store my duffel bag under it. And here's a mattress I bought, I had from Ikea. It was a twin size mattress. I cut it to size so it fits here nicely. So that's how I sleep. I put my head up there and I sleep like that. And I cover the windows with these curtains. These curtains are basically one is a flat sheet of a twin size, twin size flat sheet. I cut it lengthwise in half and then I strung it all the way from the front. There's a string that goes around and I can pull it, you know, left or right and to cover all the windows. And the front window, I just cover it with like a sunshade for total privacy. So I enter in here. And then I can sit here, do my stuff. And then for sleeping, I just go up here. So that's the most you know, the most I've done is to put like a sheet of plywood here, like two feet by three feet wide to cover this gap. And then at the head, I also have another sheet of plywood that's uh, hung, hanging from the headrest here and resting on the second row seat to cover the gap between the second row seat and the front seat. And I you know, put my head right there. I also have like an LED light here that's attached to the charge, charge control of the solar panel. Red and white that I use. Okay, and then for power I use, I, I have a deep cycle battery, second battery that's in the engine, engine compartment that's hooked up to the, to the main electronics of the car and the solar panel by a mechanical switch. I'll show it to you in a minute. Let's go look under the engine, under the hood. Also where I store my water is under the, this plywood sheet that I put, the second row seat. That's my water, like seven gallon water tank. Water jug. Let me show you the solar panel. 
It's on top of the roof here. So it's attached to the roof rack with two of these, they call them punch steel straps. I have four of these. I cut them to like, to size, so they can get screwed to the original you know, roof rack of the Land Cruiser. I had to drill a couple of holes, four holes in the solar panel on the side of it, so I could attach the, the steel strap to it. And then the steel strap goes here, gets attached to the roof rack. Very secure and very low profile. You can't even see it from the ground. So the, there are two cables from the solar panel, positive and negative, that go through the gap here, down into the car. And there is one cable that comes out of the charge controller that I routed it through here, through the gutter of the roof rack down to the engine compartment to get hooked up to the battery, the secondary battery. Let's, let me show you the charge controller. Those three cables come through the, the gap here. I figured out that actually when I open the hatch, the cables don't get pinched or anything. Nice. So they come in here. Oh, I used to just pass them through here. This is rubber down to the charge controller there. I screw the charge controller to the body of the car here. But then a neater way was to come here and, and you see there is a, I routed it through down here under the, under the car. And then there's a drain, drain plug in the cargo area. I opened the drain plug and passed the cables through the drain plug under the carpet here. That's cleaner. And then I secure the drain plug. So those three cables, two of them go to the charge controller here. The positive and negative of the charge controller for the input. And then two cables come out of the charge controller that are supposed to go to the battery. The negative cable, I passed it to and secured it to, to this, under the carpet to this the cargo hold, you know, hook. It's attached to the metal of the car. So that takes care of the negative cable. And then the positive cable, as I say, goes down under the cargo area and it goes up here, goes up to, to the engine compartment to get hooked up to the positive terminal of the secondary battery. And then another one other item on the, uh, for safety, See these cargo hold eyes? There's one here and one on the other side. When I'm in transport, driving 80, 90 miles an hour on the interstate, I have a cargo hold cable or strap that goes over all of these loose items here. That way, if I stop suddenly, things will not fly and hit me in the head with, at 80 miles an hour. Or if I turn the car over or get it, things will not fly towards the driver or the passenger people inside. So the positive from the charge controller, this cable comes here. I routed it and gets hooked up to the positive of the second battery. It's the deep cycle battery. I bought this battery from Costco. I did some calculations and figured this is the right size, 24 DC. And the negative of the battery is attached to the body of the car here. And then uh, the positive of the battery also goes to this manual switch. This cable goes around. I routed it over there to this manual switch. Use them in bolts, actually. So the, this cable that comes from the second battery goes to terminal two of the switch. And then the positive of the main starter, I disconnected the harness for the whole car that's attached to the positive of the starter. I disconnected it and connected it to the output of the switch. And the positive of the starter's battery, I put a cable that comes to the first, you know, one, number one terminal of the, man, of the manual switch. Right now, the switch is on two. It means it's running on the 
deep cycle battery. So that's for when I'm camping at night or during the day I leave the car at the trailhead. The car and the, you know, the fridge, whatever is using the electricity, uses a second battery, the deep cycle battery that actually gets charged during the day by the solar panel. And when I'm driving normally in the city and not using the fridge, I have this switch on number one. It means that the harness of the, the electronic harness of the battery of the car is attached through the switch to the starter battery. As simple as that, everything's mechanical here. So it doesn't go bad. And all the fuses are in the you know original harness of the of the car. This way the all the outlets in the car, inside the car are active. And if it's on number two, it means it's using the deep cycle battery. So I have like the refrigerator is plugged is plugged into the cigarette lighter. See the red, red light there? That's the, the refrigerator cable that's coming into the cigarette lighter that's always on. I had to do a trick there too because once you turn the, the, you know, the, the switch off, the, the, when you pull the key out and lock the door, after a few seconds that everything dies in the car. You know, there's no juice. But what I did, I went behind the glove compartment there and took the wire from the cigarette lighter, went to the fuse box, which is behind there, actually, and jumped it to a circuit breaker that's always on. It's not attached to the, you know, it's not a switch, uh, switch circuit breaker. So I put it on, attach it to a fuse that's always on. So this way, that cigarette lighter is always on. That's a tricky part I had to do that I had to go behind the compartment here, cut the wire and route it to the fuse box and jump to, jump to the right fuse. In the front seat, I have a box that has all my hiking gear and maps and stuff that I need and backpacks and I put my shoes and hiking shoes and all that stuff goes under the foot there. So this is it. That's the tour of my, I call it micro camper, Toyota Land Cruiser micro camper.